In the last video, I showed how to use Minsky for a simultaneous equation where you can change the inputs as you run them and also the sine and cosine. There were a couple of bugs as I occurred, as you could see, the sizing and things and stuff being quite quite wrong initially. And I'll just now reload the, uh, the uh, sine and cosine one that I finished with, uh, and you'll notice that this scale's all wrong because I was doing that at a zoom scale. This is now come back at the native scale. So let's actually make things slightly neater here. And the charts are obviously too big at the native size. So I'll just actually resize that, make it smaller. Whoops, that didn't work. Let's try this one, resize. Okay, let's go to click on zero for zoom size. Right, that's what we need. Go back to the zero scale. And now that looks slightly better. Um, I'm going to change... Under options, you can change the uh, labeling. So that's going to be the uh, time as the input here, sign and cos up here, and boom, there's my definition. We still are working on the labeling of the chart, so you'll find sometimes the text here just overruns. Unfortunately, it's nothing that you can do about that. We're, we're working on it to get the scaling correct, but it's still taking a bit of work on that front. Now they click on here, choose uh, options, and I'll say sine versus cosine. Notice the same thing, moving the uh, mouse changes where the focus is. So this is cos, and this is sine. Okay, so you now have a basic chart there. I'll just save the changes I've made there. Now that's uh, useful for teaching purposes. Pardon me, dropping my mouse from a second computer here. Uh, but of course, that's not what you, you wouldn't bother with a program like this if you could do this in a, a spreadsheet or a program like MATLAB and so on. Let's just create a new system. And what I'll do is come back to that Vensim in simulation of a predator prey model. I'll just bring up Vensim again so you can see it. That's a predator prey model in Vensim. What does it look like in Minsky? Okay, well, to do that, you've got to create differential equations. And that's why these programs have been invented in the first place. And the essential element here is the integral operation. Uh, the reason that, you now what you're defining is a differential equation, but what you create are integral equations on the canvas here. The reason for that is that integration is a more stable operation numerically than differentiation is. If you imagine walking up a mountain, then the slope of the mountain is going to change quite radically and very, very quickly. And numerically simulating that is, is difficult to get the turning points correct. But the area under the mountain, if you just take a slice and say, OK, what area is, is below me that I've, you know, how high have I climbed, how far have I gone, the area changed much more slowly. Even with dramatic changes in the, in the slope, you're adding a, a bit to the area under which you've you've walked so it's actually just more numerically stable so you have to create you have to trans translate a, a difference equation into an integral equation and here I just what I might do is bring up math type just to show the basic idea here actually I'm a math type rather than math CAD so let's take a look at that okay so with math CAD you can create differential equations and I can say if I'm going to try to do differential, like the rate of change of fish with respect to time, uh, then we actually start from the idea, I'm just going to put a multiply block in here, that a differential equation is effectively stating a percentage rate of change over time. So if I now, for example, define 1 over fish times DDT of fish, that is the percentage rate of change stated in a fractional terms, of the population. So I can say, for example, let's just type this. Okay, so that's doing that particular operation in math type, to just type up an equation. Now, um, to make that into an equation for a flowchart program like this, you start from this point, the first thing you do is you multiply across by the by the fish you stated just as a differential equation. So I'll do that. So rate of change of fish uh, is equal to the current number of fish multiplied by the growth rate. And that's talking how much they change with respect to time, shown in continuous time format. So that's your basic equation. Now because you have to get to convert this to a numerical, to an integral form, you have to integrate both sides. 
So if I then, let's just um, put an integral block in here. Got to look up and see where I've got that. Okay. So integrate between time zero and time. I'll actually I'll I'll do the way the mathematicians do this. You integrate with respect to uh, s, but s goes from zero to t. Okay. Uh, and I've got to integrate this side as well, of course. I work with large screens. I'm travelling on my laptop right now, so it looks a bit on the small side. So, pardon me. And that's internally times. I'll just make a dot there. Times to yes. Ah, wrong dot. Okay, thanks very much. I'll just uh, delete that. Let's make it a standard size dot. Math type didn't like that for some reason. So that's in a format that uh, math uh, that uh, this, this, um, systems dynamics programs in general operate, and just to put that as they would actually have it, the rate of change of fish with respect to fish integrated is fish. So I just type fish here, and then the same thing is the integral between 0 and t of the growth rate of fish times the number of fish. Blech. Okay, it's a bit messy, but let's see what it looks like on a, on a flowchart program. So I can just, as I showed you in the previous version, I can simply type what I want onto the canvas, but I want an integral operator there. So I can click here with the integral operator, bring it down, and the default name is INT1. Uh, I'm not going to zoom in this time. I'll just use the little highlighter here to show it because I don't want to have that same hassle with, uh, you know, with the size of the variables coming in. But if I right-click and choose Edit, then I can say this is fish. Ah, again, the location of the mouse moving around. Make that fish, and I won't give it an initial value. I'll show you why in a moment. So there's fish. Now, there are two. You see there's one output from this particular variable, integral variable, and two inputs. The top one is the actual integration operator. The bottom, this is a new feature in the latest version of Minsky, lets you provide the initial value uh, as a variable or constant input for the model. So I'll just actually type a constant here. And so I'm going to give it a value of 100 and then attach that to the bottom. So that is basically saying the initial value of fish is 100. Now, what Minsky is doing is translating all this for documentation purposes into differential equations. And what you see, you've now got this value up here. The initial value of fish is 0, not what you see on screen. And the rate of change of fish is equal to t. The reason for that little is the issue, again, is you've got to initialize ah, Okay, so it spots the fact that I haven't actually finished defining the equation. But take a look here, and you'll see I've now got the value of 100 for the number of fish there as well. So I've got to define the differential equation. So I mentioned it before under that equation I had growth rate. Okay, well, let's do that in Minsky. So as soon as you start typing a key here, it brings up a little dialog box here. So I type growth. Ah, I've got to be highlighting on the, I've got to, the cursor's got to be in there as well. Growth. Now, I'm going to use, start using some latex commands here. I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it fish underscore curly brackets growth, close curly brackets, carrot curly brackets rate. Now, let's just take a look at that again. I've got to zoom in. Okay. Now, the underscore is a latex command that says subscript it normally subscripts just the first and next character, but you put it all in curly brackets. It includes our subscripts, everything shown in curly brackets. The up key is a superscript operator, and that will even close the word rate in or in up in in make it all uh, superscripted. So if I now just click on OK, I get to the variable definition window. I'll give that. I'll make that into a parameter rather than a variable. It could make it a variable in a model, but it's actually going to be a number I feed in. Remember in that Vensim example, it had two as the growth rate. Let's do the same thing, but I'll give it a range. Notice down here, the program defaults to one, minus one, and zero, 
and over 0 0.1 is a step size. I'll make it say a maximum of 10, which is a pretty rapid growth of, growth of fish, a minimum of 0 0.01, actually 0 0.1, let's say, and a step size is 1. So that's saying the fish population increases by a factor of 10 every year as a maximum, by 10% every year as a minimum, uh, and the current value is 2 or 200% growth of rate of growth of the fish. Click on OK. I've now got that vari variable. Notice its colour has changed to blue. That's what we use for a, for a parameter. And there's now only one output. There's no input circle because it's a parameter. Not something you can change the variable of. And notice we have fish underscore growth rate, rate, rate superscripted. So it's better formatting than you can do over here where all you get is horizontal text. So that's the beginning of it. I now need the multiply key. As I mentioned, I can simply type operator straight onto the canvas. So I just press the multiply key there, and I've got my multiply block. And I want to multiply the growth rate by the number of fish and integrate it to get the fish population. I'm going to do it in a slightly cumbersome way, and I'll make it more flexible next time round. So the multiplier operator goes into the integral block. Uh, the parameter goes to one of those two input blocks. I'll use the bottom one, and I'm going to drag from fish to the multiply block there, which looks messy. And this is, to some extent, how you're required to do it in most of the system dynamics programs because they don't support the feature I'm about to show you in a moment. So I make it slightly neater. Uh, now that, as messy as it looks, gives you the equation we're after. Rate of growth of fish is the number of fish multiplied by the fish growth rate. And that's what I have, uh, pardon me, cancel. That's what I have back here in this equation here. Fish is the integral of the number of fish times the growth rate. And I've now given uh, with the initial value, which I don't have, haven't actually defined over here. It's actually defined as a pro in the program up here. So let's just go back and scale that to zero. Um, and now if I click on a chart here, I can now graph that. And of course, just with fish growing with no predators to uh, cull the population. That's going to go to infinity very quickly. So I've got to, I'll slow the simulation down. And there you get the classic shape of an exponential growth in the number of fish. Okay, that's the six. I'll stop at that to come back to the next video to make it into a predator-prey model.